The word of God to us this month is who is on the Lord's side. And starting from last Sunday, we've been joining on this discussion with the subject, who is on the Lord's side. We're going to be looking at part two today. I take my test again from our central test, Exodus 32, verse 26. Exodus 32, verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Anytime that question is asked, may you be on God's side. Who is on the Lord's side? Precious people of God, we said here last Sunday that spirituality is a custodian of every great destiny in the kingdom. Spirituality is a custodian of every great destiny in the kingdom. The foundation of our God is the foundation of righteousness. And Psalm 11 verse 3 told us that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Everyone under the sound of my voice, you agree with me that the foundation of a house is what determines the height and the strength of that house. If you want to build a tower, you have to dig deep into the ground for a solid foundation. If you want to build a, 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 a bacha, you don't need foundation. Ask carpenters. Don't need foundation. But when the storms of life come, when the winds of life come, when the rains of life come, that butcher cannot stand. But you see this tower, see standing. Your foundation is vital. The foundation of a building is the ugly part of the building that carries the beautiful part. People celebrate the beautiful part, but what is holding that building is under. It may look ugly. But that is where the strength of that building lies. In other words, the foundation you lay in God, and especially the foundation in righteousness, will keep you to the end. What destroys men is actually character traits that we are not treated. Precious people of God, foundation is critical. And we must lay solid foundation. No wonder the scripture told us in 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Nevertheless, which means notwithstanding, come what may, however, very liberally, certainly, most assuredly, nonetheless. He said, the foundation of God standeth sure. And God, having this seed, he knoweth them that are his. So let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Because in every house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but there are also vessels of wood and earth. So, you determine the kind of vessel you will be. Vessels of to honor and vessels of to dishonor. That's why he commanded that everyone should purge himself. So that he can be a vessel of to honor. You can be a usable vessel, ready, sanctified for the master's use. We all have a choice here. Your level of spirituality, therefore, will determine <laughs> to an extent how fulfilled you are in life. Because godliness, we know, has Profit both in the life that now is and that which is to come. First Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8. You can't flourish in hard times without spirituality. It's not possible. Because the prosperity of your soul is a, what determines your prosperity outside. We went ahead that last week to determine what define what spirituality is, which is simply walking in the fear of the Lord. And living by the word of God, in other words, saying yes to whatever the word of God says yes, and saying no to whatever the word of God says yes, no to. 
that last Sunday we saw the reality of being on God's side and all that. This day we want to build up on what we have started. And I want to start this morning by showing to us the characteristics of being on God's side. What are the features of being on God's side? This is very, very important. If I must be on God's side, I must know what to look out for, what, I, what must entice me to be on God's side. What are the characteristics of being on God's side? Number one, God's side is the ever-winning side. Can somebody say that with me? God's side is the ever-winning side. And because it's ever-winning side, it's the laughter side. Because in every game, the people that are winning will be the ones laughing. Three of us. <laughs> Isaiah 64, 1 to 3. Oh, that thou wouldest rain the heaven, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence, as when the mighty fire burned. The fire caused the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversary, that the nations may tremble at thy presence, when thou did terrible things, which we looked not for. Thou came down. The mountains flow down at thy presence. Everything bows at the presence of God. Everything goes down at his presence. Every other thing. You can't be on God's side and lose. Anytime you are losing, check it well. Either you are not on God's side or you are not following his instructions. For my Bible told me in Isaiah 48, verse 17, I'm the Lord thy God that teaches you to profit, that leadeth you in the way that thou shouldest go. <laughs> you can't follow him and be on his side and lose. It's not possible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Including profit, including gains, including winning. God's side is the ever winning side. Hear me, in these hard times, you can't afford to be on the losing side. It's expensive. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. I am on the winning side, the winning side, the winning side. I am on the winning side, the winning side all the time. Please remain on the winning side. I pray, pray, I pray that for you in the secret. I'm praying it in the open. <laughs> any money, any position, any man, any woman, anything that will disconnect you from God's side, may He never come to you. A man was called Ichabod. What is Ichabod? The glory has departed. <laughs> Anything in this world that will make God's presence to depart from you, <laughs> may he never come to you. Amen. The winning side is always the laughing side. If you go to a game of football, when you see the people winning, you see them laughing and shouting. The other side, they will just be like this, as if they are catching cold. And when this other one carry ball, you will just say, eh, 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 you will know. It's not, it doesn't hide. You know what that means? What lesson do you draw from that? If you're on God's side, you better know how to laugh. So all this one, you carry your face every time like Zuma Rock, as if the whole world is upon you. Even when they say good money, you say, what is good about the money? <laughs> Help yourself. Psalm 2. We saw that God laughs. We read 1 to 8. We see that, but especially in verse 4. He said, he that seated in the heavens shall laugh. Laughter is a nature of God. So if you are not laughing every time, you're carrying your face, boo, boo, boo. Children, you know they laugh with them. Wife, you know they laugh with them. Members of the church, for where? Your colleagues in the office, boom. (laughs) 
You mean, as you say, I'm fasting. It's not because you are fasting. <laughs> Laughter is God's nature. I wrote in my first book, talking about the Chinese proverb. That book is making yourself marketable. I said, anyone that does not smile should not open the shop. And it's true. It's a Chinese proverb. So all this, your Zuma rock face, so you better do something about it. <laughs> laugh at that situation. Laugh at that challenge. Laugh at the storm. Why? It's not bigger than your God that is in your inside. Anytime a challenge comes to you, look at it from the perspective of the bigger God inside you. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody laugh now? <laughs> Let the love of situations. Don't be your own, be the worst. Are you getting what I'm talking about? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Say, now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us, present continual tense, causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savour of the knowledge of his knowledge by us on every side. In other words, if, if you are with God, you will always triumph. And the triumphant side are always the laughing side. So if you are not laughing, check it. Maybe you are not on God's side. QED. Number two, what are the characteristics of being on God's side? Number two, because God is light, being in his side dispersed all works of darkness. Because God is light, being on his side dispersed all works of darkness. Now listen to me. If, for instance, you are walking. Maybe some of, maybe four of you are walking. But somebody has the touch light. He's the one with the light. You discover everybody wants to go close to him. Three of us. Because he has the light. If you go far from there, you, anything you see now your own. God is light. So when you're on his side, you will be with light. And because of that, it, it, darkness cannot come near you. And you know, every form of evil operates in the realm of darkness. Including sickness, including death, including the depth, anything evil oppressed in the realm of darkness. Anytime light calls for a conference, darkness cannot come. So if you're on the path of light, darkness will not see you. John 1 1 to 5 and verse 9. He said, the beginning was the world, the world was with God, and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. In him was light, the light was the light of all men. For this light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness understanded it not. It's a wonder to darkness. Verse 9 said, this is the light that lighted everyone. That come to the earth. Which means everyone can be lightable. All you need to do is to be on God's side. You will enjoy light. Luke 22 verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth not your hand against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. There is the power of darkness. There is the power of light. Even in physics, find out. Light has the greatest speed in this world. Over 300,000 kilometers per hour. Now, darkness has no speed. Go and check what I'm talking about. You will not see darkness again. Amen. First John 1 John 1.5 This then is a message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. That should gladden your heart. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Which means if I'm inside him, if I'm with him, no darkness at all. And if there's no darkness, no more, no kind of evil. No kind of evil. Please hide yourself in him. Darkness, I said, will always be absent 
when light comes for conference. You will not see darkness again. Amen. Quickly, let's look at scriptural examples of people who walked on God's side and enjoyed the things we are talking about. Number one we want to see is Moses. Moses, a most renowned prophet of God, and a prophet of all times, remained on God's side and was made God unto Pharaoh while he dominated in Egypt supernaturally. God made Moses God unto Pharaoh. The same Pharaoh he was running from before. A man that was a fugitive before, but he came to Pharaoh back as a God. Why? He was on God's side. Remember in Ezra 3, 7 to 10, God told him, I've still listened to the affliction of my people Israel, and I've come down. It wasn't God that came down, it was Moses he sent. And he actually went. But in Ezra 7, 1, he said, I will make you a God unto Pharaoh. You know what that means? That you have dominion. God, that's why that situation confronting you now. See yourself as God unto it. Psalm 58 verse 11 told us, Surely there is a reward for the righteous, for their God that judges on the earth here. And his capital G is not small G. Check your Bible. Check that Psalm 58 verse 11. The God that judges on the earth here. A co judge with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Teach me to determine what happened. That's why I like what happened between Archbishop Idahosa of great memory and one man called Ibaho sometime in Benin. The man said he was the president of all witches in the world. So witches must come to Benin City. Ah, Archbishop, he said, don't want we are here. He told Archbishop, he said, look, even if God comes down, all the witches in the world will come to Benin. <laughs> Archbishop said, God, relax. You don't need to come down. I'm here. I will represent you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I'll do it. When the argument was so heated, they invited two of them to NTA, Benin. Live brokers. And Obama began to quote from seven books of Moses, all the Egyptian book, all the places, what witches can do and what uh, wizards can do. When he finished, Archbishop too from scripture, quoted. At the end of the discussion, Archbishop said, I need five minutes for special operation. They gave him five minutes. It's okay now. Special operation. Obaho tell me, are you a witch? Yes or no? Answer me now. Because my Bible told me that suffer not a witch who live. The man said he's not a witch. Public. You've not heard the story before? Uh -uh. Go and research. He said, I'm not a witch. Even the devil doesn't want to die. That's why when you bind him, he'll be looking for another place of darkness. <laughs> Because of that, that's why we don't have, you can't practice witchcraft openly in Nigeria today. Don't take it, just got it. Go to Ghana. If you go to US, you have BAC witchcraft. You think it's a joke? They do it as also witchcraft. <laughs> but that meant the president of Nigeria to send to all our embassies that no witch must come to Nigeria. And today is in our constitution that you can't practice witchcraft openly. If you go to Ghana here, Ghana, they, they advertise it. So you don't even know what you are enjoying. You are God unto that situation. Enough is enough. You are so far enough in the hand of the devil and darkness. You are God unto that Pharaoh. And we saw how Moses ended. He was 120 years. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 was 120 years. His natural fault did not abate. His eye was not dim. Good news, his teeth was complete at 120. I like that. that I think that's what Pastor Della, how many of us have had the story of Pastor Della? He wanted to be like this man. Because even at 100, I think he died at 114. Between 110 and 112, when the wife died, he went and married another woman and went to buy baby things. The natural fault did not abate. <laughs> no more weakness. Yeah. Every part of your system or organ that is dying, I command you to wake up. Yeah. 
I command strength to answer to your body in the name of Jesus. Strength to answer to your mind in the name of Jesus. Strength to answer to every part of your organ in the name of Jesus. No good thing dies in you. You're on God's side. Another example we can see is that of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cup bearer. It's not even to a PA. It was a Sabbath. A cup bearer turned governor by getting on God's side. And we know the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah 1, 1 to 14, 2, 1 to 9. I'll read Nehemiah 5, 14. I'll summarize the others. Now, this was a cup bearer. And he heard of the broken walls of Jerusalem. He was moved. He had passion for the kingdom of God, for the interests of God. And the king noticed that he was not of like, no joyful content. Which means, you see, that when you're on God's side, you always laugh. The day that he wasn't laughing, uh, the king noticed something is different. Hallelujah. So it's not in the New Testament. Too. Help me ask your neighbor, did you hear what pastor is saying? <laughs> so, Again, why are you not? Why are you say? He said, "Why will I be happy when the walls of Jerusalem have been broken?" And we know how he asked the king for help and all that. He get all the, he got all the things he needed for them to go and build the walls of Jerusalem. In Nehemiah five verse fourteen, he was made governor. He was made governor of Judah. Now, somebody from a cup bearer to become a governor. What lesson can we learn from here? It does not matter your level today. Just hook up to God's side. You can imagine a start tomorrow. It doesn't matter what is happening now. It doesn't matter where you are now. Just stay on God's side. With God, your tomorrow will be all right. Regardless of the storms. Forget about what is happening to Nigeria, not happening to Nigeria. With God, sir, your tomorrow will be all right. Yes, winds may blow, storms may blow, but it will settle. (laughs) <laughs> have you seen the palm tree before? You know, he said the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Have you seen the palm tree when storms are blowing it? It can bend and bend and bend and bend when the storm finishes. I day here. You will not break. You are the righteous that will flourish like palm tree. And when you read the Bible, read it well now. So it doesn't matter the storm. If they like, let one naira, one dollar become one million naira. You will not break. Yes. You're not break. So how do I remain on God's side? How do I remain on God's side? Number one, stay in love and keep your love for God growing. First is stay in love and then keep your love for God growing. <laughs> Why that statement? Because the love of God has breadth, it has depth. So you don't, you, you don't finish it, you keep growing. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ with perfect knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So the more you grow in the love of God, the more you grow in the nature of God. So, you don't get stagnated, in, in, you keep growing. One of the characteristics of every living thing in elementary biology is growth. So you must keep growing in your love. First John 4, 16 to 18. I we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Can you imagine that? When you are dwelling in love, you are dwelling in God. Which means whatever cannot stand God cannot stand you. What can them, whatever can stop God can't stop you. He says, He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear, because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Anytime you are living in fear, check it. You may not be walking in the love of God. Romans 8, 22. For we know, not that we don't know, we know that all things, how many things? things. Including your own? All things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. All things. How many things? They may be talking against you. They may be sitting on your fire. They may be doing what, but it will work for your favor, sir. That's the truth. That's scripture. The scripture cannot be broken. Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God has turned into my good. When they were sending him to slavery, they thought they finished him. His case was finished. I don't know how much that money lasted for them, <laughs> but they met him there on the throne. They didn't know all they did was to pay his transport to the throne. <laughs> Your enemies will end up helping you. <laughs> so if you see Jesus telling them, forgive them, but they don't know what they do, you think he doesn't know what he was saying. <laughs> he knows the throne that was set before him. That's, that's the process. You, you, you don't know that Judas is, is more important than Bartholomew. If Judas did not do his own, Jesus would not be crucified and he would not be here. <laughs> Glory to God. You know Jesus prayed all night to select all of them, so it was on people's. Glory to God. Now, I've discovered that if you love someone, you will not cheat that person. If you love someone, you will pray for that person. You will not be broadcasting the person's fault everywhere. If you love someone, you will not keep black book for the person. If you love someone, you will forgive the person. God loves us by forgiving us. He forgives our sins. That's one of the ways he expresses his love to us. If you love someone, you will give to the person. Women here will understand better now. Hey, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And nothing is coming now. You know they bring fire. One day go say, this is your love. Make it catch fire, beg. Which kind of love is this? <laughs> Why are you keeping black book for your friends, for members of the church, members of your unit? Some self are so bad that if I say now God will kill all your enemies in three days, you count them inside church. Amen. 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 <laughs> inside church. Oh. Why are you carrying somebody in your heart? As a matter of fact, you are the one the thing is even pending. Because when you see somebody laughing with the person, you got more angry. You see if something happened to the person, good thing, you rise like frog. <laughs> Deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Some can't take communion from another brother carrying communion to say this one, I no go take. Feet washing, you see the line, you dodge up. Inside church. May God help us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. No talk of the one that not, there are some people that are not greeting people here. Today you go and greet that person. In Jesus' name. Amen. Even if the person does not accept the greeting, hear me. Love is a commandment, but relationship is a choice. You are commanded to love everyone, but you are not commanded to relate with everyone. Whether the person is greeting you or not greeting you, eh, no problem, but greet the person for your own sake. Are you getting me now? Yes, you know, sometimes you pray prayer. God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know what that means? God, hold me as I hold others. And you are holding somebody. So when you go to pray, you are reporting yourself to God. And when I hide iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. This is your fasting. He will hear you. Yeah. So take away those black books. Some is even husband and wife. Oh. They know they greet. Pastor, come now. They will do like pretend as if to say that together. When pastor go, he say, as I was telling you, you know, you have to. <laughs> there is no one too big or too small for you to hold in your heart. Please free yourself. I know why I'm talking like this. Free yourself. You can't claim to be loving God you cannot see when you cannot love your brother 
you are seeing. No. Let's change. Number two. If you want to remain on God's side, beware of disobedience. God does not walk with the disobedient. As a matter of fact, obedience is one of the ways to show that you love God. That's the truth. John 14, 21 and 23. If you love me, you keep my commandment. He that keepeth my commandment, he said that loveth me, and I will come and manifest myself to him. So, if you're a Christian, please, I... If this is the only thing you get from me for, here, for being here, please just make up your mind. Come to a place you tell yourself, I must obey whatever God says. If you have not come to terms with that, your Christianity will be questionable. Obedience. The Bible told us about a man called Saul, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. Saul ruled Israel for 40 years old. As 1321 told us that. After 40, he missed it. He, he went his own way. God told him, I, I believe Saul was not reading the Bible. Ah! Something that God told Moses, that the Amalekites will be utterly, the same world, utterly destroyed. God told him to go and destroy the Amalekites utterly. He understood it. When they asked him, he, he, he used the same word. We, we have utterly destroyed them. But did he do that? He left Agag, and all they came with all the things. He said, we want to worship God with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Samuel told him, come with me, First Samuel 15, 22, 23. He said, that Samuel said, had the Lord great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram, for rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. Can you imagine? Any rebellious person is like a witch. That's what the Bible is saying. And stubbornness is that it's an iniquity and idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Hiya! Saul so became rejected, anointed. That's why when he died, you know what's the cry of David? He said, How has Saul died as if he was not anointed? Because the anointed cannot die anyhow. How are the mighty fallen? He rejected the word of the Lord, though. Now that your kingdom could have been established forever, it could have been Jesus, the son of Saul. Just one step more, he missed it. The disobedience. And how many of us are stubborn today? Stubborn to authorities, stubborn to government, stubborn to husband, stubborn to wife. You know, they hear like goats. Instead of being sheep of his pasture, you're a goat of his pasture. You know, go to beat them, beat them. Blood is coming out. You see, go back to EDM. Some returning to their vomit. They repent today. Before they get to there, they change their mind and go back to it. Have a mature, grow up. So lost it. All this while you've been gambling and they're telling you, stop this Niger bed. Stop this one. You know, green. You know, they're here. You will see, go back to it. Like somebody they put rope on the neck. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. For where? Some are even thinking so. They had the main ceremony. They wait when the pastor finishes on and go. They now call their friends with their deco and arrange it. And begin to demolish. You are laughing, Abby. It's not a laughing matter. One day I was talking in church like this, it's somewhere in River State, when I was privileged to serve there. A young boy, a son of an, uh, uh, um, a pastor in Assemblies of God. Today he's one of our pastors, and I thank God for that. That boy was smoking heavily, even in his father's house without the father knowing. But that day, I just get simple analogy. I said, check how much this thing is costing you. I don't know how much they say one cigarette now. Calculate it. Check what you are spending every, every month. It can buy you some blocks. Even the people that manufactured the cigarette told you that what you are carrying in your hand is dangerous to your head. It's all of you are Jew men. You don't know what you are talking about. Now your life, now my own. 
I go, I go smoke up. Apart from the one that he said, even the people told you, this thing will kill you. He said, you don't know what you're talking about. Can't you have sense? No. Think about it. Check, check, calculate how much you are budgeting to drinking and smoking and womanizing. Calculate it. Or manizing too, because today now anything that manizes too. Just repent. Hallelujah. Number three, you want to be on God's side, beware of sexual perversion. Beware of what? The way you are talking it, talk it loud. Beware of sexual perversion. Uh -huh. You see, perversion includes both the acts and the likelihood of the acts. Amen. So all this pornography you are watching, some even in church, oh, as we are preaching here, you're doing like Sikari Tab, you do like say the you know, sometimes when we go and maybe during ministration, you see a lot of things. One day I sees one like that. You watch rubbish inside church. I'm telling you. One day in one church, eh? Dickin, oh, Dickin. Dickin. In the answer call. If you know what he was talking in the call, you will curse him. The girlfriend was calling him. He said, I want to visit you. He said, Don't come this time. We are fasting. We're church. One day prayer and fasting. <laughs> we're not going to do anything now. Inside church, oh. I'm not lying to you. Inside church, he said, We are in fasting now. No go feed, do anything now. Which means after the fasting, you still go and do something. First Kings 11 1 to 11. We saw the story of Solomon. Solomon loved the Lord when he started, though. God bless him. God gave him wisdom. There was no one that was wise as Solomon in his time. King of Sheba was coming quickly, confessed that what I had was less than what I saw. What I had, she said, was not up to half of what I saw. Now, but King Solomon, the Bible told us in that verse, King 11, 1 to 11, loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. And when she got old, those strange women diverted her heart from God and she, he started worshipping idols. And you know what happened? In verse 14, God steered an adversary against Solomon. Had that the Edomite? It was a king's seed in Edom. In verse 23, God steered another adversary for him. Solomon that's supposed to be a son of peace in, ended with adversaries. Why? His heart was torn from God. Solomon, according to Papa, has a record that cannot be broken. I don't think anybody is ready to break that record. 1,000 women. <laughs> Only one man. His mind, the wisdom God gave him was corrupted. He started talking vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Hey! The same man that was so wise before. Sin corrupts wisdom. What we shall we say of people? Even if oh, that they say lesbians. All the things God said you should not do. That's what they were. Some are homosexuals. I talk about those who, who sleep with animals. Bacillity. So my husband snatchers and wife snatchers. Every strange man, strange woman troubling your home, I command them to lose focus on your home. <laughs> I wrote in my book that one time of first you should never marry. That the first look may be a mistake, but the second one is a choice. Please mind what you see and mind what you hear. Your eyes and your ears are gates to your mind. And when they enter there, to uproot it, it may be difficult. Samson lost it because of this. Solomon lost it because of this. Samson that can carry the gate of a city. Delilah made him to sleep with sex. And they cut his hair free of charge. To show you he lost his mind, 
The first time you, you reveal your secret to this woman, they came to attack you. Second time, you see it. The third time, you see it, reveal it. You, might, you don't colo. <laughs> is it not what some people are doing today? A whole director is any salary. He has not paid children's school fees. You will still go and need them. You beg a small girl. I beg, manage them. I go make them up. <laughs> you don't colo now. Nah. What did they do you? The wife asked for 500 to go market on TV. He says, shut up. They have not paid salary. When you go and bow down and kneel down before a small girl and be begging. Please understand. Righteousness, consciousness. Undying crave for sanctification and continuous exercise unto godliness are fundamental requirements for remaining on God's side. You don't only, you know, sin is every unrighteousness. Sin is transgression against the law. You, you, you must carry righteousness consciousness. You must have undying crave for sanctification. Continue to exercise yourself in godliness. It's not something of once and for all. When you take your bath today, would you take it tomorrow? If, if you go out now without knowing, without taking your bath, you see that when you scratch your body, you see there are deaths. The same way the life is. Are you getting me now? So keep cleansing yourself. If any man purge himself, he says he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and ready for the master of you. Remember, if you are born again, you are the right, the, you, God has made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And godliness is profitable unto all things. So deal away with that malice. Deal away with that gossip. That evil speaking. That slander. Jamming two heads together. That's one of the things God heard. Six things God heard. It's a Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. One of the things God heard is jamming two heads. And that's what we'll have that in the church today. This one will come and carry this one and go and tell the other one. And then assault it from there and bring it back. Hear me. Anyone that gossips to you against somebody else will soon gossip you with another person. <laughs> Don't forget this. As I close today, let's look at dangers of not being on God's side. <laughs> what are the dangers of not being on God's side? What are the dangers of not being on God's side? What are the advantages? Number one, it blocks you access to wisdom that enthrones. It blocks you access to wisdom that enthrones. The wisdom of God enthrones. Proverbs 8, 15, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. That's wisdom. Psalm 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, if you don't have fear of God, you won't walk in wisdom. That's divine wisdom, because there are different kinds of wisdom. Divine wisdom, the wisdom from above. Look at the man called Daniel, Daniel 1, 8. The Bible said, Daniel proposed in his heart not to defy himself against the with the king's meat. Now, when they were checked leather, verse 20, remember, they were 10 times wiser than those who were eating the king's meat. And I saw in my Bible in Daniel 1, 4, that this Daniel had the wisdom to operate in the king's palace. There's a wisdom to operate in different places. Different wisdom. That's why when the king dreamt, he didn't know what he dreamt, which is not possible for somebody you dream, even if you are sleeping with your wife, your wife wouldn't know. But he said, if you don't, people don't tell me this dream and interpretation, all of you are dead men. Then I too, from 16 to 19, remember, Daniel and his team, they went, they said, give us time. And they went to seek God. And God revealed it to them in the ninth season. And they came with the interpretation. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. Anytime you see a child that be doing well before, not doing well again in school, call them more. You don't they do something, don't they commit? Or sin, corrupt mentality. Number two, danger of not being on God's side. It causes faith to fail. It causes what? Help me tell you about your faith will not fail, though. <laughs> it causes faith to fail. This is very, very crucial. Faith failure is like heart failure in man. Because 
In this kingdom, it is to you according to your faith. So if your faith fell, ah. <laughs> the just shall live by his own faith. The, it was written four times in the Bible. Galatians 3.11, 3, Romans 1.17, Hebrews 10, 38, Habakkuk 2.4. Four. four times. The just shall live by his own faith. So if your faith fell, whose own will you live with? First Timothy 1 19. Holding faith and good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, and made a shipwreck. Faith without good conscience, or let me put it, without the fear of God, will end in accident, in shipwreck. If you hold faith with one hand, hold good conscience, good character, good godliness, righteousness, hold it. As a matter of fact, faith without godliness is balloon. It will soon blow. Proverbs 8 verse 1. The righteous is as bold as lion. But the sinner or the wicked run it when no one pursue it. <laughs> That's why, have you discovered, anytime you sin, when you want to pray, the devil will come and tell you, you want to pray, who will hear the prayer now? Don't be a collect me yesterday, have a think come now, when the good God will answer you, and before you know it, you're cast down. You will not be able to do that. You won't have confidence. Just like your child, some of you here, you're looking at me now, like saints. When you were a child, you did something. When you commit, even before they know, they will just step, but you go to work somehow, somehow. <laughs> When you didn't do well in school, you, <laughs> as you are coming back, you'll be walking as if you have two left legs. <laughs> but if you did well, you come with confidence. Even before you enter the gate, you throw your results. <laughs> That's why it's not good to go there at all. It will bring lack of confidence. You won't have confidence to come before God. You, you know, what is prayer? Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. You won't have boldness again when there is sin. You won't have boldness. It's not possible. It's not possible. Sometimes, you, you, some of us are parents here, when children do something, so all of them, some may be lying, they will be lying, but if you look well, you know who did it because you won't have confidence to talk well. Three of us. You <laughs> be talking as if water is in the mouth. That's why some people are taking back seat today. Used to be in front before his back seat today. No. When Adam sinned, do you know the Adam that was having fellowship with God? He went to hide. God said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? He said, Because I'm naked. Who told you you are naked? Sin makes you to be naked before God. Don't try it. Don't try it. Now let me tell you what the devil does. Please don't forget it. This is what he does. It's like giving us sin is a bet. He gives it to you. Nobody can beat a child before the father. Two of us. Can you beat a child before the father? No. No matter what. But if you want to beat and punish that child, you can carry sweet, chewing gum. Come and collect. Now you do it like this. Take now. And if he has a jukokuru, long throat, longer throat, you go stand up. You go look the father like this. You go move small. Look again. You go move. And if he comes out, <laughs> that's what the devil does to us. He says the bet of sin to you because sin is enticing. And if you take it, he can now, the accuser of brethren, can accuse you. But let's grow up. Number three is that it afflicts incurable diseases on the. It, and inflicts incurable diseases, as in the case of King Asa. Sin brings disease. Why? Sin is a process of death. Sickness is a process of death. Every sin, he the soul that sinner shall die. So, don't allow him to say death to you. We saw the story of King Asa in 2 Chronicles 16, 10 to 13. Asa that was doing well before, turned. Even when the priest asked him, he said, no. 
He went with rage against the priest of God. <laughs> and Asa died. Because of that. He couldn't recover from that sickness because he was looking for help where there is no help. Please note that repentance, genuine repentance, godly repentance, sorrowful repentance, he don't repent by smiling. <laughs> I wrote in my book, turning your marriage vow to wow, about what you call sincere apology. If we sincere apology it comes with a contrite heart, contrite, repentant heart, and a contrite heart, God will not despise. Psalm 51 verse 17, David told us, a contrite heart, a broken spirit, God will not despise. That's why David escaped. It seemed that Saul didn't escape. Saul never asked for repentance once. But every time David offended, you will see him asking for forgiveness. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I renew a right spirit within me. So please, let's have genuine repentance. Ezekiel 18, 22-24. Even if somebody has been committing sin and he, he repents and changes his mind, God said he will not punish that person again. Repent, genuine repentance, and don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. Second Corinthians 7, 10 to 11. For godly sorrow walked repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world walked dead. For behold, this says something that you sorrowed after a godly sword. What usefulness wrought it in you? Yea, what clearing of yourself. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all things, you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Sin afflict death. Please help yourself. I pray for someone here today. The mercy of God for atonement from every form of sin and unrighteousness. Because somebody, what is sin? Sin is every unrighteousness. If it's not right, it's wrong. And if it's wrong, it's a sin. I command healing also for everyone that been afflicted because of sin in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus told that man, go and sin no more. Which means sin was behind that affliction. And everyone that needs to be restored, I command you to be restored. Amen. No untimely death in your family anymore. Yeah. No one here will die before his or her time in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus for mercy, for atonement right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone whose head needs to be restored, be restored now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that needs to be freed, be freed right now in the name of Jesus. I decree the mercy of God upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Be healed, be released, and be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To God alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Rise on your feet this morning. We are going to pray. But before we do that, I want to give opportunity for some people here. You have heard the word of God. The choice is now yours. Should you continue to be outside God's side or to be on God's side? It's a choice. All you need today to be on God's side is to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. As 2 Corinthians 5, 21 said, he made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we become the righteousness of, Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. So you can become the righteousness of God. That's a free gift. That's the first step. That's a free gift from God. Somebody is here today, you want to surrender your heart to him. He said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way. That's all he want from you. Turn to him. Turn to him and believe. Somebody is here today, you want to turn to Jesus and believe. You want to give him your heart. You want to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why not put your hand on your chest right now? If that is your desire this morning, put your hand on your chest. Pray that prayer. That is what will bring you on God's side. 
Pray that prayer right now with me. Somebody is here. You gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did. But between you and God, you are no more there. As you are looking at me now, your heart is panting. You have taken that, that life back from him. Why not reconnect back to him? Draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Return to him, he will return to you. Somebody wants to return back to Jesus today. Put your hand on your chest. Pray the prayer of the dedication with me. And someone is suffering from certain evil habits. You know it. Down today, up tomorrow. You have New Year resolution today help you, but Jesus can help you. Jesus can deliver you. Jesus can break that yoke. You are here today among the category of mentioned. Please put your hand on your chest wherever you are, inside or outside. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Pray the prayer with me now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died. You resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Right now, my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. I am born again. I am a child of God. 